Wonder Woman is awesome because she's a deranged psychopath with a sword who kills people. Except she isn't. As I quote from William Moulton Marston's letter written to this person, who I'm now quoting from another person's research paper, this, my dear friend, is the one truly great contribution of my Wonder Woman strip to moral education of the young. The only hope is to teach people who are full of pep and unbound force to enjoy being bound, enjoy submission to kind authority. That was a kinkier quote than I remember. Anyways, basically being unapologetically compassionate and feminine is the point of the character. This is where Wonder Woman Bloodline comes in. A really cool film that does look a bit jank at times. Oh no. But it's not at all embarrassed by this. As the writer Maureen Scott said, Being a good person is more than just hurting bad people. Picture this, children. Your mom doesn't care about you. She cares only about work and keeping up appearances. Then this beautiful, taller, literal princess walks in and gets all her attention. Um, why don't I show you the rest of the house? Your grades might be great, you follow orders, but it doesn't matter because she's still not there for you. Therefore, from childhood to becoming a young adult, your self-esteem is in the garbage. Neglect and inadequacy chokes you by the throat for years and years. So the only way to express any power in your life is to defy your mother. However, this act then leads to her death. So how do you live with yourself? If you blame yourself, then what's even the point of being alive? You'd have nothing left. The only way to survive is to blame the princess and dedicate everything to ruining hers. You know what I hate the most? HP printers and characters whose whole thing is that they're too angry to listen to reason. You hurt me! And now I hurt you. So Vanessa Capitellas got my nerves pretty badly when I first watched this. I was on the side of every other character telling Diana to stop wasting time with her. Maybe she deserves to stay the way she is. But then I felt so guilty when the ending came. Wonder Woman is of course a warrior woman from a place where philosophy and culture is just as prominent as gladiator battles and such. But the glue which keeps everything together is honor. And Amazon does what is right, no matter the cost. Everyone gets to decide what they want to do with their life. I might not succeed, but this is what I choose to try. She honorably believes everyone deserves a second chance and commits to this. In fact, there's a really sweet moment where she both accepts the loyalty and shelters a minotaur. I take it you won't be staying for dinner. Diana as Wonder Woman, as a Justice League member, as someone who porked Superman. Yeah, well, you were flying with Superman and three is a crowd. Is a champion in man's world, celebrated for accomplishments. However, the tragedy is that regardless of how accepted she is in man's world, her own mother has no place for her in hers, because leaving home against Hippolyta led to Diana being disowned. I stole this armor, the lasso, I, I betrayed my own mother. If you wish to steal from the Amazons, you will have to go through their protector. She let you go? No. After you left, we fought. I turned my sword on my own mother. If you leave, you will never become queen. You will never set foot on this island again. Are you truly willing to throw away everything you are? I've never seen her more ashamed. Ask me again, mother. Wonder Woman is a myth man's world told itself about me. She didn't slink away in the cover of night. It's strange that you should be my own daughter, and yet someone I do not recognize anymore. She is not a disappointment to her people, her mother. Screw her! Screw them! This is why Dana is then gravitated towards Vanessa. If Dana was an idealist with a warrior sense of purpose, then Vanessa never knew what she wanted to be. All she knew was that she doesn't want to be like her mom. However, as we may see these differences, Dana doesn't. She only sees herself in her, as daughters who are in pain because they let their mothers determine what sort of ideas they should have of themselves. I know how you feel. I have a strong mother too. Mother. I am so sorry. Have you told your mother? You told me what? I'm sorry I couldn't be the daughter you wanted. Well, for Wonder Woman, it really becomes a question of, like, the, the Vanessa and her mother becomes a mirror of Wonder Woman and Paul's relationship, and this idea of 
you know, trying to sympathize with someone who's in a similar situation with you, whereas also being kind of that more grown-up person yourself. So, kind of by being the, um, the older, wiser, more experienced version to Vanessa, she sees a little bit more of where her mom's coming from. So Vanessa is part of the bad guy's plans to find Themyscira, invade it, and take their stuff, and not even say thank you afterwards. Mortals talk too much. But then their secret weapon, Medusa, turns on them, and a massive battle commences. Vanessa has completely given up on herself, but Diana just won't let her go. And it's this precise moment was when the film went from being good to becoming truly great for me, because everything suddenly emotionally fitted into place. The film isn't about Diana transforming from one person to another, this was about her transforming someone else by specifically refusing to let all those feelings, the imposter syndrome, the guilt, the pain, change her. This strength where she's willing to blind herself to protect the eyes of someone who hates her is what inspires Vanessa to undo the damage she did to herself because she, at this irredeemable point in her life, she can still lean on Diana for strength to climb out. Wonder Woman never gives up. She's the hug we dream about when we're dying in the cold. And in this moment, we see both the glory of this, but also how hard it is being her. To be Wonder Woman, you have to be able to keep putting your hand out, even when others smack it away all the time. Thus, through these actions, the message of the character, the very idea of her as a teaching tool, is realized. I have to look! No! Listen to me, Vanessa. I will not let her harm you. I deserve this. I deserve this. Your sleeping chamber is like my room in the royal palace on the mascara. Albeit a bit smaller and without handmaidens, of course. I know you think that. That you're not enough for those who loved you. That you never will be. Can you just decide that? To make the whole world better? I felt that fear too. I want to be something else. Anything else. But I knew my purpose in this life, and if it is at all in my power, you will survive long enough to learn yours. Wonder Woman's mother then sees the kind of person her daughter is, and is proud. One of the cool details in the film is how none of the characters call Diana Wonder Woman. They even do a whole thing at the beginning to draw attention to it. What's your code name? That's because the film gives it to Apollota, so we can feel how Diana feels. How for the first time, that title doesn't feel hollow. I'd argue Wonder Woman and Bloodline is the best Wonder Woman film. It's not perfect, but it succeeds at what counts. Her stories aren't just fun romps, they gotta teach you something. And that's where the dramatic power is. The harder it is to believe, the more powerful Wonder Woman is when she teaches you how to. This isn't you. You don't know me. I want this. You fought Darkseid. This is like half as bad as that. A third at best. I pledge my life to you, Diana of the Mascara. She's dead, and it's all your fault. You have earned their name. You truly are a Wonder Woman.
This video went through a pretty massive rewrite. In fact, it was probably the most painful one in recent memory. Actually, I didn't need to say probable, it was. I foolishly tried to go in with a build the tracks while the train is moving mentality, where I voiced and edited each paragraph as I was writing them, with the intent that being able to watch the video essay as it was constructed would you know, hopefully help in writing the next section. However, that led to an essay which basically lost its main point halfway through and led to a really, really bad final paragraph. So I went back, reviewed it and added in more paragraphs, which helped make everything flow better, but the terrible conclusion remained. As a result, I bit the bullets and just sat down recently and rewrote the entire thing from scratch while using some sentences here and there to fill in or expand points, which led to a draft I really, really liked. But then the video editor process, I realized it wasn't really engaging to watch, so I ended up rearranging almost everything. The opening music tribute became the ending music tribute, and the Vanessa discussion moved all the way to the beginning just after the intro. Anyways, I'm just glad I've got it done. It literally felt like you're getting kicked in the balls every day during production of this video, and I can now move on. Anyways, I'm in the hospital right now, so bye. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon. <laughs>